Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and today we'll be making more procedural alien rock materials. Some stuff here are going to be based on the last tutorial, so check it out if you haven't. Also, check out the new procedural alien rock material pack on my Gumroad. 18 materials for Octane, all fully procedural and super unique. Also, you get 14 rock models with it. Some of them are procedural. Link is in the description. Patreon and YouTube memberships are a huge way to help me make more and better content for y'all. So feel free to subscribe and you'll get access to the tutorial project files as well as my own personal project files, free products, and much more. Lovely shout out to all my sensational patrons and members. Elad, Spencer Clark, Abhishek Singh, Lynn, KB Davy, Yinning Gong, Guillaume Lopez, The Great Wanderer Studios, Harley Spick, Hanan Gosseroni, Dave Toro, Neil Pollack, Builder Bull, Quarantine Peugeot, Sophia Wilton, MS, Emmanuel Ornelas, Bass Pixels, Sean Akiyama, 3D Monkey Biz, Kaler, Jake, She Was Lost, Pierre Marie Burton, Braganet, Chris Schultz, Mariano Carnavale, Bob, Moax Limited, Arlen, Elijah Jackson, Stav Sobolov, Batholt, and everybody else on the list. You truly are helping me make this happen. Follow me on Instagram at OJ and comment, subscribe, share, hit the bell. Go watch the first Rocky movie. It's actually incredible. Let's go. So I have this weird rock form I sculpted. I showed how I approached this in the last tutorial. I added a couple more lights compared to the last time though. I have this very strong rim light, another rim light from the other side that's way weaker. I have this large fill light here and I also have an HDRI with a bunch of studio lights mainly coming from the top. Okay, let's add a universal material, BRDF mode to GGX, turn off metallic, and I'm going to add two octane noises, add an XYZ to UVW projection to them, and actually I'll add a third noise with the same projection, then I'll add a mix node, use the top noise as the amount, the mid noise as texture one, and bottom noise as texture two. So the whites from the top noise are showing the bottom noise, and the blacks from the top noise are showing the mid noise. Plug that into the albedo channel and let's play with the bottom noise. I'll switch the type to circular and just up the contrast and details. On the mid noise, I'll switch the type to chips, up the contrast and details and scale it down and maybe pull the gamma down a little just to make it brighter. Let's add a gradient node to both mid and bottom noise and give them some cool colors. up the gamma a little on the bottom noise to make it slightly darker and let's edit the top noise and I'll add a bunch of details and up the contrast so we really get solid black and whites and we can see how the two noises appear in these nice noisy patches. Let's plug the mix node into the bump channel too and I'll quickly remove the unneeded channels just to declutter everything a bit and we're looking okay. Seems kind of bright to me, so let's darken the bottom noise and I'll add just a tiny bit of white at the very tips. It's still very bright. I can make the mid noise a bit darker, but it probably has to do with the specular because uh, the backlight is very strong. Let's plug the top noise to the roughness channel and yeah, that already helped. Let's add an octane tag to up the subdivision level. And you can see it's way less janky now. All right, let's add a displacement node and two more noises. I'll bring the height down to one and change the displacement type to vertex. Also up the levels to two and turn on auto bump. And let's up the contrast and details on the bottom noise, change mode to chips and make it slightly brighter. Mm, that's pretty cool. Let me up the mid-level to 0.5. So the blacks displace inwards as well. This helps give sharper edges to the rock, but can also push some inside parts out if the displacement height is too high. Let's combine these two with an add node, plug that into the displacement. Let's change the top noise type to circular. Up the contrast, play with the scale and details and increase the blacks. And yeah, we're getting some weird fun bulges. All right, let's add a gradient node to this whole thing and make the blacks much brighter. I can also up the height a bit. And let's add another noise and combine it with the rest with a multiply node. And what I'm going to do with this noise is essentially create a whole different part of the rock that's bulging out and will eventually have that more crystally texture. 
So I'm actually going to change it to chips and I'll scale it up and stretch it. I'll bring down the gamma to get less blacks and up the contrast by a lot. And now I get these large distorted zebra type like effect. And we can see that the other noises are showing only through the white parts. So all the blacks are going to be pushed way into the rock and all the rest are going to be kind of mid-level and pushing out. Now I'll actually edit the mid noise because I want less bulging. So I'll add a lot more details to break up those large white parts. Cool. So now you can see how it's affecting the surface. We get these patches of rough rock and the rest almost looks like it's been heavily scraped or carved in. And I actually want fewer but larger black patches. So I'll bring down the gamma, maybe increase the details a little, and then scale the whole thing up. And that's pretty cool. I like how this thin part here looks. That's dope. Okay, now it's time to make that crystal bulge out of those carved areas. So I'll duplicate this top noise. I'll attach the exact same transform node. That's very important. And I'll combine it with the rest of the noises using an add node. And if I solo the whole thing... Now the white parts of this noise are covering all the gray noises we had, so we can't see anything. What I need to do is invert this noise so all the black parts turn into white. And once I slowly bring down the gamma, we're starting to expose the whites. I want to keep the detail level about the same as the noise underneath, but I can play with the contrast and gamma to expose more or less of the noise. And if we see how we're looking, we're kind of starting to get some bulging, but definitely not enough. So let's add a gradient node to this whole thing and make the white much darker. And now I can up the displacement height. And we're getting closer. Let's add a gradient node to the top noise and up the contrast on it. Yeah, definitely getting bulgier. Yeah, that's really cool. Let's add a gradient node on the bottom noise and make it slightly darker. And I think that's cool. Let's move on. I'm going to take this gradient node and plug it into the transmission node. And now Octane will make all these white areas transparent. I'll also turn on fake shadows in the common tab. And now we're getting somewhere. Look at that. Okay, I'll add a multiply node and I want the albedo on all these glassy areas to be black. Otherwise, they won't really be transmissive. So I'll plug this same noise to a gradient node. I'll invert the knots in it and plug that into the multiply node and combine it with our albedo system. And now you can see we have our noise color system with these black patches added on them exactly where the glass is because we're using the same noise to trigger different channels. And I'll actually make the gradient on this darker and more contrasty. And if we take a look at it, Mm, this looks cool, but it looks wrong. Let's update the render and, and yeah, now it's looking right. It's still very milky and I think it's because there's a lot of bump on those glassy parts. So let's plug this whole color system to the bump channel. And we know all those glassy areas are almost solid black, which will kind of smooth out the bump in those areas. Sick. Let's add some dispersion just for the heck of it. Now we're getting the slight prism effect. It's subtle, but it can get a way more gemstone-y look. Okay, let's add a random walk medium, plug the color system without the black patches into the albedo and use the gradient node to colorize it. That's really nice. Let's bring down the density a little bit. And lastly, I want to add some edge details. So I'll add a dirt node and I'll invert the normal and up the strength. And you can see that we get these black edges. I'll add a gradient node and right click to invert knots and crush the blacks and just play with it a tiny bit then combine it with the whole albedo system using an add node and it's way too strong so I'll just bring down the radius and up the tolerance. It's looking pretty sweet. I can add a gradient node to those color noises and just darken it a little bit. Adjust the noises a little bit. I mean, shit, we're pretty much there. Look at how amazing this looks. I want to edit this noise here just to see if I can get this transition here a bit sharper. Let's isolate this part and let's up the contrast on its gradient nodes. It's looking better, but now the displacement is way sharper, which I don't like. So I'll duplicate this gradient node. I'll pull the contrast back to where it was on this one 
to soften the displacement again and I'll use the harsher gradient for the transmission. And if I pull the knots to the left to increase the whites, you can see it kind of solved that. I mean, you can just end it here. The cool thing is that now you can play with the transform node and because all the bulging crystal effects are connected to these two noises, changing this position and rotation will affect everything else. So cool. Okay, I'll undo that and just bring down the rim light a little bit and let's zoom in. So we can see some of the edges are overlapping from the inside out. Honestly, it's not that huge of a deal to me. I do want to remove the dispersion and bring down the specular just a tiny bit. Now, if I bring the displacement mid-level to zero, the edges don't overlap anymore. But now we're getting these white artifacts in the crystal areas. Again, not a huge deal, but let's see if we can fix it. I'll add this noise as a dirt map. Up the contrast by a whole lot. Let's up the mid-levels again, and you can see this definitely helps. Hmm. But let's keep it at point two. Let's actually make our rock displacement darker, so we can get more contrast between the rock and the crystal displacement. It's looking pretty cool. See what happens if we push the displacement height even more and yeah it's a cool look but we get those artifacts again let's actually switch the order on the albedo so the black crystal patches come after the edge dirt and now i'm just playing around with the displacement details and the contrast and details of the crystal noises so i'm just fast forwarding this so you can kind of see my approach to trying to fix those artifacts I got pretty close, but didn't fully get rid of them, which is totally fine by me. I just had to bring the displacement height down and call it a day, but I wanted to see if there was another way. Then after reducing the density and touching up the color in the medium, I went back and tried a different approach to mixing the displacement noises, where I used a mix node and then used the crystal noise with the black patches as the amount, then the same inverted crystal noise as texture 1 and the rest of the rock displacement noises as texture 2. Then plug that mix node into the displacement. Then just adjusted the noises, crashed, and then changed the crystal noises type to Perlin, which actually I like the results of that better. From then on, it was really just getting the contrast and spread subtleties of the crystal noises just right using the noise node, gradient nodes, and I ended up adding a color correction node to them to get even more subtle control over the contrast and exposure of the noises to kind of match between the two displacements and the two textures just enough to a point where I'm satisfied.
If you want to make the different textures kind of grow like in the intro I made, all you got to do is animate the gamma of these two noises. So I'll solo the whole thing and first we'll go to the frame where we want the animation to stop. We'll select both noises and keyframe the gamma. Then we'll go to the first frame, select the noise with the black patches and slowly bring down the gamma till we don't see it anymore, then keyframe it. And because this noise is masking the white noise, it's already working. However, you probably want to also keyframe the white patches as well so the bulging displacement will appear like it's growing and doesn't just burst out. So on the first frame, we'll bring up the gamma of the white patches slowly till we barely see it and hit keyframe. And you can see that it, now it's looking pretty cool. And for an even better effect, you can go to the F curve of the keyframes and really ease out the animation. So it starts kind of fast, but ends very slowly or the opposite, you know, but, you know, give it a little character. And the same with the other one too. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now you can see that it's kind of slowly growing on the rock. And that's what I ended up with pretty much. I hope that's as exciting for you as it is for me. Like this is so amazing. You can get this amount of detail using just one single material. I heard good things about the procedural abilities of Octane 2021. Haven't checked it out yet, but who knows what we'll be able to do with it. Anyway, this project file will be available to my Patreons and feel free to check out the procedural alien rock material pack on my Gumroad, procedural madness, and Octane forever.